Away we go for British sidecars in 2019. Stevens and Charles would look to have made a fantastic getaway there. They're challenging Kershaw, who's hit the front. Not the best of starts for the Birchills from pole position. Everybody through Old Hall nice and cleanly so far. The first of 12 laps here, but let's not get too excited too soon because they've got to plunge their way down the avenue to Cascades. Through the left-hander alongside the lake there, off to their left-hand side. Excellent start, though, for the reigning champions. Kershaw is in the lead, but Ricky Stevens has put it up to second. Yeah, I'm quite surprised because uh, Ricky and Ren had a bit of a a bit of a worry on the start line. They thought the clutch was slipping, but we made a few adjustments, and uh, at the moment it looked like it went off that start line pretty good. So it's uh, it's not slipping at the moment. But yeah, looks like a good clean start for most of the crews there. And uh, Dave Kershaw and Stu Clark taking the whole shot. Chicane for the first time, Birchall just slotting into third position, they'll be a bit frustrated about that, and they almost run into the back of Stevens and Charwood, real difference in speed there, coming out to the chicane over the hilltop. Blackstock's right in the mix as well, number 95, Lewis Blackstock, Paddy Rosney alongside him, and here come the Birchalls, up the inside of Stevens and Charwood. They will feel it's their second place by rights, of course, because they've dropped down from pole position to third, back up to second, but look at the lead that Steve Kershaw has already as we climb Clay Hill for the first time. Yeah, that lead's come off the back of uh, the Birchalls and uh, Stevens and Charwood having that bit of a, a battle into uh, Nick Brook there. That's just given the uh, Kershaw-Clark pair in a, a bit, bit of breathing space on the, this first lap. Looks like John Holder's made a good start too. Somebody running wide. Was that Todd Ennis running wide in the background there, right out onto the grass? No, it's John Holden who ran wide. Good save though, Paul. Yeah, fantastic save. That would have been a bit of a bit of a worry there for uh, his passenger Lee Kane, but well held uh, John Holden there. John Holden and Lee Kane, yeah, would have had a bit of a scare there. Definitely, at least the sidecar wheel was on the grass coming out of that very quick double right-hander at Druid. So, one down, 11 to go. There's the six of Todd Ellis and Chaz Richardson on the Santander Salt LCR Honda. Everybody on 600cc outfits, don't forget, in 2019. New look to the championship, definitely seems more competitive. Somebody else running wide, was that the Birchalls, I think, dropping the right-hand side of their outfit onto the grass? They've lost some ground. Stevens and Charwood having a real go. Ricky Stevens looks rejuvenated so far. Yeah, we had a fantastic test back in March in France and uh, came away from there with some great lap times. And uh, yeah, Ricky's uh, raring to go this year, Ryan as well. But uh, we've had a couple of bad seasons where uh, he's lost his mojo, but at the moment uh, he's got it back. And when Ricky's got his mojo, he can, uh, he can drive a sidecar. Yeah, champions of 2015 and 16 back to back. Then we had a dominant Tim Reeves title season in 2017 and last year, the Scottish success of Kershaw and Clark. And it's Scottish success at the moment, but the Birchall's breaking away now from Stevens and Charwood. 95 is Blackstock, right behind him, the Christies. And it's Holden and Kane. Edison Richardson is seventh. Brian is eighth from Rob Biggs in ninth and Ben Holland completing the top 10 at the moment. Back up Clay Hill. Good prize fund available as well in 2019. The champion pairing will be awarded £10,000. Second overall, £5,000. Third overall, £2,500. So there's real incentive, Napo, this year to have a good start to the season in the one race they have here at Alton. Yeah, absolutely, Greg. You know, the, the series organiser, RKBF1 and Roger Body, he's, uh, he's put his life and soul to this championship now for nine years. and. Uh, his efforts are, can be seen now on track where we've got 30 bikes all vying for a, a championship win and uh, as an extra purse we've got a £10,000 for the winner so it's, uh, it's fantastic and uh, great for the sport. Stand by for fireworks, this is only the third of the 12 laps, this is going to be, I forecast, a rather intense fight here between the champions and up the inside and the Birchalls almost on the grass, they did well not to touch down through there, that was excellent stuff from all four men involved, wasn't it? But what a move from the Birchalls. Ben and Tom move ahead on lap three. And at the moment, this is great to see. You've got the current world champions up against the, up against the current British champions. This is uh, this just shows the absolute talent in this British championship, you know, fighting with the world champions, and it's, it's great to see. Absolutely great stuff, and we're hoping for more and more wildcards this year, of course, with the fact that we do have everyone on 600 CC outfits. Here we go. Talk us through it, Paul. Yeah, he just got, obviously got a good drive there through Hall Bends and just slashed it up the inside into Cascades, and uh, there's not a lot that Steve could do. They may be looking for a bit of a cutback, but uh, the Virtuals managed to hold that line. Incidentally, we've already had one World Championship round this year at Le Mans, but we've still got Hungary, Germany, the Netherlands, Croatia and Spain. It finishes in Navarra in Spain later this year. Look at the 34 outfit having a real go. Wow, that was close. Yeah, that's a great pair, and that, that's uh, Sam and Adam Chrissy uh, 
pair of brothers from Beverly up there uh, in Humberside and they, they had a fantastic run in the World Championship at Le Mans. I think they finished fifth there, but uh, a great pairing, young pairing, which just shows uh, how good this championship is, bringing these young talents into the championship. Look at the heat haze there, Paul, at the top of Clay Hill as they all appear and now navigate the double right-handers of Drews. 21 is our first retirement of the season, unfortunately. Ryan and Callum Crow on the LCI Yamaha, the Northern Fuel Limited bike, are out of the race with a technical problem at Old Hall. Unfortunate stuff for them, but definitely not unfortunate here. Number two is Gary Bryan and Phil Hyde. Number five right behind them, Rob Biggs and Jerome Smith right up with him there. LCR Honda for them. I think one thing I will say, Greg, you know, we've been waiting all day for this race, but I think we've got the best of the weather here at Altman Park, and uh, yeah. it's been mixed conditions all weekend, but certainly uh, beautiful conditions at the moment. And how was the weather generally at the Val de Vienne test in France? Was it good? Yeah, absolutely fantastic. We were actually hoping as a team that we had a, at least one day of wet conditions so we could get some wet settings, and unfortunately that never happened. But uh, Someone absolutely. with a problem? Someone that's with a problem? Oh, and it's your men now. Hopefully that's just an intermittent problem, and no more than that for Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood. They're still going, but are they out of the race? I fear they might be. Well, as you said before, Paul, they did have a problem on the grid. Hand up again there from Ryan Charwood. I can't visually see anything that might be wrong, Paul. Yeah, there's nothing hang actually hanging off the outfit. Oh. But, um... Sorry to cut in. Contact there as uh, Rob Biggs cut through. Don't think he meant to do that. No, that was Todd Ellis and Chalice. Sorry, Todd Ellis. Six outfit. Yeah, sorry. Well, they don't want more contact, do they? They had a bit of that last year at Thruxton. I'm just not sure whether that, uh, that clutch issue that uh, Ricky mentioned on the start line has maybe come back and uh, yeah. just uh, maybe yeah, not safe right. for him to carry on. If that is the case, where will that mostly be affecting them? Is there anywhere in particular, upshift, downshift, or is it a bit random, really? Yeah, mainly the upshift, and obviously uh, the drive out of the corners, it's just, you know, losing a bit of power out of the corners and a bit of speed out of the corners, so maybe Ryan's putting his hand up just to let the bikes behind know that they have got a bit of an issue. Maybe they are trying to continue and keep going, but just letting the bikes behind know that they're not fully on pace, so maybe just a safety issue, so that's uh, well done by Ryan there. Coming through to start the fifth lap of 12 here at Alton Park. Definitely an issue for the 2015-16 champions, Ricky Stevens and Ryan Charwood. We think it might be the clutch. They had a problem with the clutch before the race began. They're still running, though, here be uh, behind Todd Ellis and Chaz Richardson. They're sixth. Stevens and Charwood behind them on the black outfit are seventh. At the front, it's the Birchills. They're leading by 1.8 seconds. Kershaw and Clark are second from Blackstock. Then it's the Christie brothers, Holden and Kane complete the top five at the moment. Edison Richardson are sixth. Then it's Stevens, Brian, Biggs and Holland completing the top ten. Eleventh is Chris Walker. Great to see Chris back on a sidecar outfit this year. Remember, it all got curtailed quite badly when he had an incident at Cadwell Park. He's running in 11th place at the moment. Yeah, Big name back in the championship, Paul. Yeah, an incident. Yeah, like you say, it's great to see Chris Walker back in the championship. And his passenger has to be mentioned there. Tom Christie, that's actually the twin brother of Adam Christie, who was a passenger of Sam Christie on the number 35-4 outfit in the picture there. And Chris Walker is running in 11th position at the moment. There, Stevens and Charwood. Stevens and Charwood, former double champions, on only lap five. Maybe the clutch issue has come back to haunt them out of the race. They soldiered on. They did so well to carry on for as long as they did. But that's our first big-name retirement of 2019, and they've stopped up at the Shell hairpin. Well, what more can you do? Yeah, unfortunately, they tried the best there by the looks of it. Uh... We're only presuming that it's the clutch issue that uh, was there at the beginning of the race, but uh, we won't know until uh, get back to the pits. There goes John Holden on Sam Christie at Lodge. Well, we said he was loving his sidecar racing this year. I reckon he's going to be loving it even more now because that's fourth place for John Holden as we come through into the second half of the race. So three you watching is John Holden, the ARS Kawasaki, and he's gone through on the Christie's on the number 34 LCI Yamaha. Quite a selection of bikes out there in the field. Simon Gilbert, number 51, for example, on the Adolf RS1. That's a very different kind of bike altogether, isn't it? Actually, the, uh, as you just mentioned there, the number 51 outfit of Simon Gilbert is actually the same chassis as what John Holden's riding. So it's a, it's a German chassis, very, very similar to the Swiss chassis of the LCI that you see in there of the Birchels in the picture, who incidentally are now the uh, manufacturer of the LCI chassis um, in the UK. Um, Louis Christian, who's um, made many a bike out there in Switzerland, unfortunately he's getting to an age where he's uh, been like he needs to retire and he's passed over the uh, baton to Ben and Tom Christie, so, uh, sorry, Ben and Tom Birchall, so they're now yeah. uh, building them chassis. 
It's a lovely looking outfit, actually, isn't it? And so is this one, to be honest. Number nine in position nine. Here he is, Chris the Stalker Walker, back in the British Sidecar Championship this year. As Paul says, Tom Christie alongside him on the tag racing Yamaha. All 600s this year. Oh, he's got a problem. Well, we've really put the jinx on that one, haven't we? Just as we see Chris Walker for the first time all afternoon, can you believe it? Has it broken down? Yeah. I think, as uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the program, that uh, a few of the passengers have been struggling this weekend, and unfortunately, uh, that number nine passenger, Tom Christie, is one of the passengers that has been struggling. So, whether that's the issue or whether there is a problem with the bike, I'm not too sure. And it often happens here at Alton as well, doesn't it? I remember we had a passenger actually coming off completely on the run down to Lodge here a couple of years ago. Well, we're going to see a change here. I wonder the Christies ahead of John Holden. Now we might see a change this time, we might see a change this time, John Holden, they're going to do well not to touch there, they did do well not to touch there, again, great stuff, do you sense that as a driver and a passenger, can you just sense they're there and there might be contact? Obviously as a passenger you've, you've got a bit more vision, you can look around a little bit more, as a driver you're just kind of looking ahead of yourself, so if the, if the bike that's behind you doesn't quite show enough nose, other than your pit board saying that you've got plus the hero, you don't actually know where they are on the track, whereas as a passenger, you've got a bit more of a, an idea, you can look around a little bit more, so I'm sure Adam Christie knew that John was coming there and was a little bit mindful of his right arm getting trapped, but uh, yeah, John's a fair race, a clean race, and, uh, but a hard racer as well, but uh, yeah, I, think, uh, I don't think he'll be giving in just yet. Chicane again, oh look how they're closing under braking there through Britons over the hill, top down to his is but a curb there for the sidecar wheel. You've got to be either really brave or really mad to be one of these sidecar passengers, surely they are so courageous. Up the inside we come again, again they do well not to touch. Brilliant scrap going on here, down at the Chicane, a little bit of grass as well, but they're going to be offline now. Uh, John Holden and Lee Kane, I think they've made it stick this time though. Well they've waited patiently, they've tried a couple of times and failed. This time they've tried and they have succeeded. Well done, John Holden. That's fourth place ahead of the Christies. Yeah, whether John should have been uh, spending a couple of laps just seeing where maybe Sam and Adam were a bit weaker than what he was and knew that there was a point where he could get past and just pull a little bit. You just don't know. Excellent stuff. There's the 89 being lapped. The Birchalls head into the final lap here, passing Craig Hawkswell and Derek Taylor. They lead Steve Kershaw and Stuart Clark by the extended margin of six seconds but that's not how it's going to be all the way through 2019 judging by testing judging by what we've seen here in practice and in qualifying and of course the fact that the virtuals aren't doing all of the races there will be a lot of changes i think there's going to be a few ups and downs across the season this year now look at this don't forget also when we move into the uh, round two at brands hatch we will have the two race format and also for the second race we will have that reverse grid for the second race so that's going to change things dramatically. Obviously, over the last couple of years, we've had the 1,000cc and the 600 involved in that, whereas now they're all 600cc, so that's going to make a big difference to the podiums. Yeah, that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Because we're not going to see those quicker 1,000 just shooting through off the line anyway, are we? And that really might well mix it up this year. And, of course, we'll have double points in the last round. Greg, I think John Holden lost his passenger there. I saw something on the left-hand side, actually, Paul. I think you might be right. Something I happened on the left-hand side. Has Lee Kane come off? Yes, he has. Well spotted, Napo. Lee Kane has come off the John Holden outfit. Now, of course, that outfit of John Holden, number four, is going around without a passenger at the moment. Although, if you finish the race with your passenger not on board, you can't be classified anyway, can you? There he is, he stopped. He stopped sensibly. Oh, John Holden and what Lee Kane, shame. what a shame, yeah. Unbelievable. 11 about to be lapped, Dean Nichols and Kenny Cole, but all focus on the Birchalls. World Championship Specialists, former world champions. Ben and Tom Birchall on the Mitchells of Mansfield, LCI Yamaha, win the opening race of the Molson Group British Sidecar Championship in 2019. Steve Kershaw finishes second, and Blackstock will come through to take the last podium position. Excellent stuff for the 95 of Lewis Blackstock and Paddy Rosney. They'll be absolutely made up with that. And with John Holden having had that problem, Lee Kane coming off on the last lap, the Christie brothers finish fourth. Well, first of all, credit where credit's due because that was sublime stuff from the Virtuals and not an easy one there. Yeah, absolutely. They've shown their class there and uh, they'll be... They'll have been frustrated after their finishing the World Championship, finishing fourth, after dominating the whole weekend. They had a couple of issues. There was an incident on the first lap there in Le Mans, but to, to come here and uh, I want to say they've had an easy ride. Um, Steve Kershaw and Stu Clark and a, a number of other outfits have took it to him in qualifying, but uh, yeah, completely shown their class there and uh, 
take 25 points here at Alton Park. So the Birchalls have done it on the Mitchells of Mansfield LCR Yamaha. They win the first race of 2019, having had that difficult start from pole and dropping to third. Steve Kirscher and Stuart Clark, unlike the Birchalls, doing all of the races in Britain this year. So you could say in some ways, effectively, they will be the championship leaders. And well done to the 95 of Lewis Blackstock and Paddy Rosney. They are on the podium. Everybody, of course, fourth down was moved up because of that incident we saw Lee Kane coming off the John Holden outfit on the very last lap. Can you believe it? Kevin Cable's fitness regime over the winter has paid off. He's in the top 10. Well done, Kev. Brian Gray is in 11th position. Then it was Kirk and Smithers. Rupert Archer had a bit of a dramatic afternoon on the Adolf RS1. 13th for him. Then it's Rabston. And Gary Horsepole has moved into the points.